In this video, we're going to take a look at something called the Cartesian coordinate system. The Cartesian coordinate system is very foundational to algebra. We use this all the time, and we'll see this in many classes beyond this particular class. So to set it up, let, let me uh, actually start by um, just refreshing our memory on how we graph just a single value. If we have x equals 4, then we know exactly what we need to do to graph this point on a number line. What we'll do is we'll draw a number line and we'll reference everything based off of 0. So we'll find where 0 is and then we'll go to the right 1, 2, 3, 4 units since this is a positive 4 and then we'll put a dot right here at 4 on the number line and this place on the number line represents this value of 4. That's something that we know very well. Now, what if we had not only an x, but also a y that we wanted to plot simultaneously? Let's say x was 4 and y was 1. Well, then it gets a little confusing because we would need one number line for the x's and another number line for the y's. So I suppose you might could do something like this. You might could do one number line for x, you can make another number line for y, and label this the x number line, label this the y number line, find zero on both of these, and on the x number line go to the right one, two, three, four units, and on the y number line go right one unit, and plot both of these points. So there's the point x equals 4. Uh, here's the point y equals 1. But you see that that's just not not such a great idea because those are disjointed. What I'm what I'm trying to show is that these are together as a pair. And so there's nothing in my picture here that designates that. These are broken apart, they're disjointed. Um, it looks like they're working independently of one another. So there was somebody uh, who thought up a great idea for how to get these guys together. His name was Rene Descartes, and that's where the word Cartesian coordinate system comes from. And what his idea was, was to take the Y number line and turn it vertical and make them line up at the zeros, and then we would get what's called a plane. And this is uh, extremely helpful for uh, plotting points that have both an X and a Y that you're trying to plot simultaneously. So it looks something like this. So you have your X number line and then you have your Y number line. Now when you're writing the X number line and the Y number line in the context of a Cartesian coordinate system, we change the name a little bit. These are now called axes. This is called the X axis. Axis is singular, axes is plural. And so you have the x-axis and the y-axis, and so together these are the axes. And basically the way it works is if you have a point like 4, 1, where x is 4 and y is 1, then what you'll do is you'll find out where x is 4 on its number line, like here, and where y is 1 on its number line, and then you'll put a dot where these guys meet. So if you have a point like right here, then take a look. This point uh, does have an x coordinate of 4 and it also has a y coordinate of 1. And so you can plot different points in the plane and they represent different x, y, uh, what we call ordered pairs. And so the way we would write this point or, or express this point is as x comma the y value and then we put these in parentheses. Now, this notation is, does not mean an interval, like interval notation. Uh, this, is, this is different. This would be represented as 4, 1, where the x is 4 and the y is 1. And that's representing a point inside of our x, y plane. All right, now let me show you a few vocabulary words associated with the Cartesian coordinate system. The, uh, the first one is right here where the x-axis and the y-axis cross each other. This is what's called the origin. So you have an x being 0 and a y being 0, and that's the center of the Cartesian coordinate system. All right, now, as you start plotting points all over the place, it can get a little confusing as to 
referencing where these points are. And so another vocabulary word we have is a quadrant. And there the plane is actually broken up, broken up into four quadrants. The upper right, the upper left, the bottom left, and the bottom right. And they're numbered in this order. Quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four in a counterclockwise fashion. And so these are great because they just uh, give a rough intuitive idea of where a point would be. So for instance, if you said, where's the point seven, seven? Well, here you have a positive seven for X and a positive seven for Y. And if you found where these guys lined up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, comma, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you would be right here in the first quadrant. But other points might be in the second quadrant if they have a negative X but a positive Y. They might be in the third quadrant if they have a negative X and a negative Y. Or they might be in the fourth quadrant if they have a positive X and a negative Y. So it just gives a, a just a general um, sense of where points are in the XY plane. Okay, now we've already talked a little bit about how to plot a point XY, but let me, let me just repeat this just because it's so important. If you have a point X comma Y, what you'll do is you'll find out where X is, one, two, three, four, five, six, let's say X is maybe seven, and you'll find out where the Y is, let's say negative one, right? And then you'll match these up with each other. Let me move this seven out of the way. Put the seven up here. So you'll find where X is seven and Y is negative one. So you'll put a dot here. The, the dashes aren't necessary. I, I put those for illustration purposes, but really the dot is, is where the point lies. And so you just find the X and the Y and then you'll match them up. All right, so let's close out this video with just a little practice. Let's try to plot these X, Y points. And remember, always the X comes first and the Y comes second. So when they say negative two, five, we automatically know the X is negative two and the Y is five. So let's see, let's find that. Here's negative one, negative two on the X number line on the X axis. And we'll go positive one, two, three, four, five, positive five on the Y number line, the Y axis we'll see where X is negative two and Y is five. That looks like right about here. So here's point A. All right now, how about point B? Point B, the X is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The Y is negative one. We'll match these up. And this point right here will be the B. And notice once you get comfortable plotting points, you don't put the dashes anymore. The C, the X is zero and the Y is negative four. So we'll go negative one, negative two, negative three. Here's negative four, but the X was zero. So we don't go left or right any. We're right here on the Y axis. So there's C. All right, and then last one, point D. The X is one, but the Y is zero. So we we'll go out one on the X axis, but up uh, none or down none on the Y axis. So this would be point D. So there we go. So we've plotted some points. We've learned a few vocabulary words like quadrants and origin and things like that. So hopefully this gives you a good introduction to the Cartesian coordinate system.